know, don't we, that Catherine, our beautiful Princess of Wales, is a huge Downton Abbey fan, aren't we all? And of course, Julian Fellows has recently announced that the next movie is going to be the final one. They always are, of course, until some money comes through and the actors can be persuaded once again to recreate those wonderful roles. Not quite sure where we are with Dame Maggie Smith, though. Maybe she could come back as a ghost, offering some advice. It has been done before, as we all know. What's interesting to note, though, is this, that as we know, Her Majesty the Queen was also a fan of Downton Abbey. But what a lot of people don't realise is that her interest in sort of all things upstairs and downstairs, in fact, goes back quite a number of years, really with an amazing royal connection. Now, according to a very well-placed source, Catherine wasn't totally au fait with Upstairs Downstairs. That was the mega hit, of course, from the 1970s, which starred Jean Marsh and was created by her and the other actress Eileen Atkins, two superb actresses on and off screen, let me tell you. Both wonderful ladies. But what was interesting about their idea, really, they came up with it because they couldn't get any work and so decided to write something for themselves. And that's how Upstairs Downstairs was created. It went on to become a phenomenal success for over five years, one of the biggest exports for London weekend television in the 1970s. But unlike Downton Abbey, it wasn't glitzy and glossy. The sets were literally, well, quite threadbare as one could imagine. And more importantly, the actors were picked and some of them, this was their very first time on a major television role. So consequently, the costs were relatively low too. So what is the Royal Connection? I think Neil Sean here in the very heart of London. Nice to have your company as ever. Thank you so much for taking the time out for joining me. Yeah, I know. I've, it's nice, isn't it? It's lovely to share these sort of stories. I don't know about you. I loved Upstairs Downstairs growing up and I like the idea that um, Ruby, Hudson, Mrs Bridges, it was kind of like a world, wasn't it, that you felt very secure in. And a lot of people said at the time, which I thought was interesting, that really it was a very secure world for the people below stairs you know they had somewhere to live some food and of course had the protection if you like of the upstairs the higher echelons of the family not everybody of course felt the same way what you see really with julian fellows is a replication of that he obviously was a huge fan of upstairs downstairs and really started off with the mega best film gosford park of which really took inspiration to become downton abbey check that out I've met Julian Fellows on a number of occasions, he's a wonderful man and so articulate that you really feel you're in the presence of royalty, I know. And as many people know, I've met quite a number of members of the cast of Downton Abbey too. So what really connects our late and wonderful monarch, Her Majesty the Queen, with the likes, of course, of Upstairs Downstairs, and more importantly, their love together, which I was told apparently they watched uh, on occasions during the pandemic, Catherine and our late monarch. Apparently, Catherine really just became so addicted to Downton Abbey, she couldn't miss it, couldn't wait for the episodes, and they were sent through in advance. I'm not quite sure if His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, is as addicted, perhaps, as his wife, but nonetheless, we all love a good story. But you see, way back in 1970, a man really did help shape the stories, being the original story editor behind the success of Upstairs Downstairs. You see, the script editor, Alfred, already had very much a huge royal connection. Not just, of course, to Queen Elizabeth and Princess Margaret, but of course her father too, King George and the Queen Mother. You see, his father was an equerry, oh yes, that's right, an equerry to Edward VII. And not only that, when he suddenly passed away, he became a private secretary to King George. So you can understand exactly how he got an insight into the workings of not just the royal family, but literally the upper class system. Now he wasn't without money himself, and he wasn't without background, but more importantly, as he admitted later on in life, he drew heavily from his father's recollections and indeed the things that he'd been able to attend, including birthday parties, society events, alongside the Princess Elizabeth and Margaret. So you can see exactly why Upstairs Downstairs became such a huge success. If you mansion in the early 1900s, the Bellamy household could be seen as a micromism of Edwardian life, and Shinossi drew heavily on his knowledge of that world to supply the wider themes of politics and society. His early life in court circles also gave him an unerring sense of dress, speech and manners. The famous set piece, When the King is Invited to Dinner, was taken from his own experience. 
The series was first transmitted in 1972 and ran for five seasons and 68 episodes and became a worldwide smash hit. In these beautiful Edwardian squares like this one in London where Alfred would get his inspiration and of course set it at 165 Eaton Place. Now I was lucky enough to meet Jean Marsh and as I say she played Rose brilliantly and she said to me that when she got the part or when she decided to create it should I say with Eileen Atkins her mother said well why do you have to play the part of the parlour maid Rose? Why can't you be one of the ladies upstairs? And according to Jean she said no it's a juicier part playing the maid trust me that's a role I want and so consequently that's a role she wrote for herself. As I say upstairs downstairs is still very much loved today and Catherine I'm told is also a devotee of that show and that was brought to her by our late and wonderful monarch Her Majesty the Queen and likewise apparently the Queen became slightly obsessed with Downton Abbey all thanks to Catherine the Princess of Wales. It's nice to know that the two ladies bonded over the world of society both upstairs and downstairs. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.